I was about to start, but the audio is gone. Eh. Why is the audio gone? That is strange. What if I go ahead and disconnect my phone, and then I reconnect it, and then maybe we will have audio if we're lucky. Because that's not great. We kind of we kind of need some audio is the case. There we go. Yeah, you know, it's such a meme solution of turn it off and on again, but honestly, it just is the solution so much of the time. I don't know why. <laughs> but a lot of the time, it just straight up is the solution. Hello, hello Stone Sloth. Hope things are going well today on this fine weekend at the beginning of December. I've not touched this game on the channel in like a month. Here and there, I'll still do like just Sometimes I'll still do the thing where bobs just in case I come back to it I figure I haven't been doing it every day, but you know I do have my party at a decent bit higher level and stuff I was using a three-star healer before I think and they got to level 40 and they were maxed out So I was like, oh, well, I have this four-star healer. So that's why I started uh, That's why I started using there We have not played this for quite some time because my motivation to play this game has not really been all that much of there like I've mentioned before, I'm, I don't really like covering apps on the channel, but, you know, considering what we've done so far, it's like, okay, at some point I should at least get to the end of the initial three stories, and then we'll go from there and see what comes of it. I'm at such a busted level right now that we can probably rush through a whole lot. My intention with this, because free games are usually just like, oh, if you don't want to spend money, just, you know, spend 3,000 years grinding or something like that. Because, you know, if you don't have a... If you don't have five stars, your max level is going to be lower. It's going to be at 60 for four stars or uh, 40 for uh, for three stars, which you can increase with shards, but those are going to take forever to get and yada yada. So, I don't know if this is a game that you can realistically beat for free without spending 3,000 years grinding <laughs> is, the, uh, is the thing, because that's oftentimes how free games go. The more that I've looked into this game and, you know, stuff about it and especially the music, it's like, wow, they really were trying to make, like, a really, really fantastic game, but it just sounds like it was really bogged down by the fact that it needed to be a free app and not, you know, a full-on released game is the thing. So, which, you know, is understandable, I guess, but, you know, might impede the overall experience potentially, but... I'm gonna at least see how far we can get. I'm gonna at least do the first three stories and then go from there, and then I'm gonna decide if we uh, just see how far I can get without having to spend 3,000 years grinding and then stop at that point or something like that. So, I still don't want to for sure say that it'd be a full, full playthrough, but we're gonna be doing stuff because, you know, we usually finish adventures that we start on this channel, but, you know, free apps aren't meant to be just started and finished. They're meant to be something that keeps players in for a forever not forever but you know what i mean <laughs> chill out my i'm doing pretty alrighty my uh my big assignment that's coming up for uh for my computing science class in a couple days here no that's okay i thought i was back for a hot sec i can use this the thing where bobs is what i can do i may as well that's something that i should do there um this one class that i've been taking for computing science is on programs that are designed to play games so like we'll look at ai that would play things like chess for example the main game that we've been looking at is the game of go which is apparently like a super ancient game that's been around since you like forever basically one well, them real old games and we've been doing group assignments to make bots to you know play go essentially that achieve various tasks we have like starter code and it's like make the bot be able to do this but the final assignment that's due in a couple days it's very vague in what it uh, in what it wants. It's just like, yep, you can uh, make a bot that plays Go. Have it beat four of our opponents. You get Funny it's out of five marks. You get one mark for submitting, and there's gonna be four opponents, and you get one mark for each opponent it beats. We don't know anything about these opponents. I don't know if they're like TAs, if they're other bots, or what the heck is going on. Apparently, you'll also get bonus marks if it beats other players, uh, like other students' bots in the class, is the thing. So, my group is planning to have a team meeting tonight being like, what the heck are we even going to do? Can we just, like, you know, basically take the code that we've done in assignments up until this point and just Ooh. hope for the best? Or something like that? Because it's super vague. It doesn't say anything that it actually expects us to do. It's just like, yeah... Use what you've learned, make a bot that plays Go, and we're gonna test it against some opponents of ours. And it's like, 
Eh? I wish I knew, like, specific stuff that I should be doing. Something like that, but... Yeah, so there's, uh, there's that. So it seems like one of those assignments where it's just like... We'll just try to do smidges that we can, but we straight up don't know what to do there. And it's, you know, it's not a long-term enough project. It's doing a few days here. That it's not enough time if we actually wanted to do something like train a neural network. So, that is what's going on there. I don't know if I should be afeared. I don't know if I should be stressed about it. It sounds like it's just going to be one of those group projects that just turns out however it turns out. So... There's, um, there's that. That's what's, uh, that's what's going on with me. I'm not gonna get anyone, uh, anyone new. It is big sad. So, so yeah. Apart from that, one week left of university in-person classes. Um, and then it'll be exam week and stuff. So, that's what's going on there. Are you new? Nope. You're not new. Nobody's new. There's nothing new around these parts. Alright. All right, what are we doing? I think we just have one more chapter two left, right? For these, there's wealth chapter two, and then these ones are chapter threes. I think from what I looked up online from the initial stories, there's just three chapters of each of the three things, and then like other things happen in the plot. So I guess we'll um, I guess we'll do wealth chapter two, and we'll go around doing the chapter threes and stuff. Is what we shall do. So if I go to, um, no. Oh, a little bit of lag there. If I go to quest and I select that and I say prioritize quest. Then we can do this. There we go. But yeah, the game schedule, the game situation on the channel is a little bit wonky right now. Because, like, we've currently technically got, like, four ongoing, uh, games that are being streamed. Oxpath Traveler Champions of the Content, which was on hold until, like, just now. Uh, Mario plus Robert Sparks of Hope, Persona 5, uh, Persona 5 Royal, and then, uh, let me look at the schedule to remind myself. Um, and then Pokemon Scarlet. I forgot about that one because it's been a little while since we streamed it, <laughs> is the, uh, is the case. Um, meanwhile, I'm also trying to figure out what the heck we're gonna do about Tales of Symphonia, doing Minecraft stuffs in the background, and before the end of this year, I still want to do the throwaway save file for, uh, Fire Emblem Three Hopes. And I want to do Nier Automata. So, the most realistic things that I can knock off the schedule are Octopath Traveler after, like, committing to a decent bit. And Mario plus Rabbit Sparks of Hope, which is, like, one world to go. Is that Hanet up in the top left there? So, my... <laughs> I'm trying to shift a little bit to focus on this and Mario plus Rabbids. Finish those, because Pokemon Scarlet and Persona 5 are going to continue to take me, like, 3,000 years. And then we can do the throwaway save file for like fire emblem three hopes here in the near future and then start near automata that's my plan so that's kind of why we're also coming back to octopath traveler to uh knock it off this schedule is the case but yeah um saw the picture and thought this was triangle strategy i feel pranked yeah i uh i wish i had more octopath traveler memes but there i don't have a whole lot of those maybe i'll have to amass a whole lot more before octopath traveler 2 comes out but I still have a lot of triangle strategy memes that I never used from when we were streaming that earlier this year. It's like, hey, that's part of the HD 2D series there, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do that. Yo. So whenever we go live with this game in the near future, I'm probably just gonna use triangle strategy memes. Is what I'm gonna do. How are you doing today, Shar? Oh, it's you. Been a while, hasn't it? Yeah, like over a month. How long was it the last time that I put up a triangle strat? It was when I was in Italy, wasn't it? The last time I played triangle strategy was when I was in Italy. So yeah, it was over a month ago. What do you say? Um, sure. Yeah, we'll undertake quests required level 18. What are we, like, level 40s? Something like that? Level 50 for some of our characters? The story's so far. Yes, I appreciate the recap. <laughs> I will appreciate it here. Lady Herminia, the covetous witch. Her riches are unrivaled in all Ostera. Selling her product, the gamer girl Bathwater in the shadows. She rules Valor with money and fear. But Vargello has plans to reclaim his home. Almost hanging if I just wanted to come to spread Benedict's wisdom that murder's okay. Yeah, Benedict loves his war crimes, doesn't he? With his comrades, he infiltrated Lady Herminia's banquet. And there befriended her arch-rival Taviani. Use what we can and who we can. And so Vargello worked to make a name for himself in the shadows. It'd be really cool if some of the characters that you could recruit in Octopath Traveler here were uh, triangle strategy characters. 
Considering they brought in Bravely Default characters and near characters, I honestly wouldn't be surprised. It seemed like it would be really hey, natural for them to bring in Triangle Strategy characters as well. But I don't know if whether they do it or not. I They haven't up to this point, and like even in Japan, where this game has been out a lot longer. And even if they did, I probably wouldn't be able to get the RNG to get them anyway, so it probably doesn't matter. Lady Herminia, your agenda for today. First, on the schedule is negotiations with Master Otto of the Consortium. Ah, that we needed to know about the Consortium to get the Golden Path and Triangle strategy because we needed to answer they are of the Consortium to- No, it's neither here nor there. After that, lunch with representatives from houses Beckel and Mazron. Enough. Lady Herminia, one more thing worries me. Regarding your dealings in the Frostlands, Word has it that Lord Taviani is attempting to interfere. <laughs> the man keeps himself busy, no? There's no cause for concern. I've already seen to the matter. There's nothing my wealth cannot buy. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Merry Christmas! Uh, <laughs> it is starting to get close to that time of year. I need to start figuring out things to do for nerds. Well, I need to do. Um, what do you think Taviani wants? I think I had different... I think I was doing different tones for all these characters, but it's been so long that I wouldn't remember what the heck they are. Yeah, this is the first time he's called for us directly. <laughs> Maybe he wants us to entertain one of his mistresses. <laughs> you must be kidding. There's no faster way to burn a hole in your coin purse. That's how they measure men. The more you spend on them, the more they love you. I see. So what you're saying is... If you want a good mistress, you gotta pay for the privilege. How is the... How did the conversation get to this? <laughs> <laughs> you taking notes, newcomer? Cool. It's go time. Oh yeah, isn't that like the one thing that guy says? I don't know. Ridiculous. Oh. <laughs> so you're too noble for this. Is that it, boss? No. It's like he's saying he's not interested in paying for pleasure. Also, I'm a little bit chilly today, so I don't have, like, my arm through the sleeves of my winter jacket. But I have my winter jacket, like, around me because I'm a little bit chilled today. I don't know why. I'm not interested in playing and paying for pleasure. Anyway, I'll bet you the job's not nearly so innocent. Taviana must have had a reason for keeping it secret. Well, probably is. As this dude. Bargelo, you've done good work for us. <laughs> Why, ever since you've joined up, our fortunes are better than ever. Yes, I saw something in you from the start. How would you like to take on your biggest task yet? Hi. I'd like nothing more. Jitsu. Good. Northwest of the town of Emberglow lies an underground ruin. Deep beneath the ruins lies Calamity Ganon, or whatever the heck is going on in the revealed trailer of Second- not Second Breath, that was the meme name everyone was saying, uh, Tears of the Kingdom, whatever the heck. It has a massive stock of powder, it's also where a deal will go down. They say Lady Herminia herself is going to show- are we gonna blow it up? Are we gonna Michael Bay? Alright, so where do we come in? I want this quest to be directed by Michael Bay. You're going to take her out. Kill her. Burn her. Turn her to ashes. I see. We're going to need a big fire. Just so. You ought to make for Ember Glow at once. My right hand will be waiting for you there. Okay. Well, to Emberglow we go. Bargello. Is it Bargello or Bargello? No. You couldn't have asked for anything more. <laughs> to think we'd get this chance, and so quickly. We can't afford to mess this up. We're going to take out Herminia and forge a new future. It's gonna fail, because there's still gonna be a chapter three. Shall we? Like, right? Yeah, <laughs> that sounds about, sounds about right there. 
probably uh, probably would do that. What are you waiting for? You're one of us, right? For the family. You know, as I've been writing up the script for uh, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet recently, I have, you know, I can't do the whole thing yet because I haven't written, you know, because I haven't beaten the whole game yet. But one of the chapters that I wrote was just like their handle on open world, them, you know, not having level scaling, them applying a linear system onto an open design without any change to the linear system and it being all wonky like that. Um, and there also not really being a whole lot to find out in the world apart from Pokemon. And I started to think, like, I haven't played a massive, massive ton of open world games. You know, I've played, uh, I've played a decent few open world games, but I was starting to think, uh, is up. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet my least favorite open world game that I've ever played? Or is it Watch Dogs Legion? <laughs> there were some things that I really liked about Watch Dogs Legion, but the overall execution was just not there. My, uh, in my opinion, you know, so it's been a, it's been a little bit of a debate in my head there. <laughs> All right. Everyone's here. We're going to be meeting with Taviani's right hand, but in terms of like all the open world games I've ever played, the other ones would be like Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, Assassin's Creed 4, Xenoblade Chronicles X. What other open world games have Elden Ring? Can't forget, uh, can't forget that one. What other open world games have I even played? Like there's probably some that I'm forgetting. But when I thought about it, it's like, have I even played a massive ton of open world games? You know, what was Scarlet and Violet would try to perform this stuff Watch Dogs Legion did? It would probably run at 0 0.1 FPS. Okay, <laughs> if it was trying to do stuff performance-wise like that, then yeah, it probably would. Wonder what they're like. Yeah, this will make or break this job. When it comes to Scarlet and Violet, I, uh, you know, whenever I find memes online, I always save them to my memes folder to, you know, post when I'm going live with stuff. One that I got recently that I'll probably post the next time I go live with Pokemon Scarlet and Violet is there's that famous Miyamoto quote that everyone likes to, you know, quote whenever a game seems rushed out. Where it's like, you know, a bad game delayed will eventually be good, but, you know, a bad game released will always be bad or whatever the heck the exact quote was. Someone edited it, so it's like, a delayed game will eventually be good, but a bad game will sell 10 million units in three days. Um... <laughs> So, that's probably what I'm going to go live with next time. Wait. But yeah. I appreciate the lurk there, Stone Sloth. Hope you're making some good stuffs. And, you know, no worries on that front. Is that? Couldn't be. So, spoilers to the next Sonia. Scarlet Violet meme. Sonia. Is that you? From Sonia. Long time no see, Bargello. I'm going to switch between saying Bargello and Bargello because I straight don't know. And I see you brought your toadies, too. Watch your language, woman. You haven't changed a bit, have you? Oosh, nice. Sounds tasty there. How long has it been? Ten years? Went through a lot back then. It's good to be together again. Whoa, the band of misfits here. Yeah, they probably can't. I don't believe I've met this one. I'm the coolest one of the bunch. Um, they're new to the family. They're trustworthy all the same. Yeah, we never have made it this far without them. I see. You must be something special then. <laughs> I think you're Taviani's right hand. You never lost a fight when we were growing up in the slums. But I never thought you'd end up in this line of work. It's a means to an end, just like it is for you. Who says a popper girl can't have big dreams? Tomorrow, Lady Herminia will show up at the ruins. <laughs> I just dwelled on that for a little bit. Are your big dreams committing murder on this Herminia bitch? I mean, she is pretty darn evil. I mean, it's basically like an Assassin's Creed plot line where it's like, ah, the hero's gonna throw themselves into that line of work because, uh, because they want to, you know, be a good influence on the world by taking out evil people. Uh, we'll rendezvous with Lord Taviani and do the deed. Speaking of Assassin's Creed and when I was in Italy, I, um, you know, there's been a lot of videos that I've seen on YouTube before of people that, like, go traveling while doing a video, while delving into some subject. 
and like the story of their travels unfolds as like the story of whatever topic they're delving into unfolds and that's something that i always really wanted to do and i haven't gone traveling in a long time for italy so i was like ah i want to take this as my opportunity to do a video essay so while i was in italy i did record like some intros to some scenes for stuff to talk about assassin's creed because i figured like oh i'm going to freaking italy the like what's associated with italy either mario or, um, you know, Assassin's Creed 2 or something like that. So I was like, let's do, let's do Assassin's Creed, how about, because there's a lot of things I want to say about that. So I did record, like, the intro to, like, a lot of things that I would want to talk about there. And then I figured I'd just do, like, the whole script for it at home and, like, narrate in front of a microphone here and stuff and, you know, delve into some things. But I've started writing some things for the, uh, kind of stuff and made me think, wow, each of these individual things that I want to delve into is worthy of, like, a little video essay all on its own. They're so disconnected and so different from each other, all the things that I want to talk about and about the Assassin's Creed series in general, that it just feel like such a weird collective video essay. So now I'm starting to wonder, like, if I should just do, like, a little mini-series of smaller video essays about Assassin's Creed that's centered around my time in Italy, I guess. If it's even a project I want to wind up doing. Because, I mean, worst case scenario, it just goes, like, unused. You know? <laughs> is, the, uh, is the case. But, you know... The stuff that I record, it's like, well, I should probably use it, you know? It's that person I know! It's the nerd! How's it going today, Plague Doctor? But yeah, things you associate with Italy. Pizza, pasta, Rome, beaches. Nah, it's okay. In terms of, like, gaming industry stuff that I can talk about, <laughs> you know? Sleep well, you'll need your strength. <laughs> stuff in the gaming industry there. You know, I never went to a place that Ezio would have actually lived. But, you know, I explored around in Sorrento and stuff, and, you know... There were some areas that I noticed, you know, architecture that was in such a way that having played Assassin's Creed, it's like, that's a climb spot, you know? And it's like, oh, I can talk about how they kind of normalize these, you know, normal architectural features to mean something else in terms of gameplay, and that's pretty cool. Or when I went to Pompeii, for example, I set up my camera on, or well, my phone, on this little tripod finger bob stick that I got specifically for my, uh, for my trip that I still haven't found, like, a good place to put apart from my- It's just been sitting on my desk for a good while. I set up this little tripod thing where Bob and recorded a bit talking about how Assassin's Creed would use things like natural disasters and events that we know happened to tell its fictional game plot. Like, it'll tell these real things that did happen in a way that it happened because of their fictional game plot. So that's a thing, Rob, that can be talked about. That kind of plays into abstracting the past that I've talked about on the uh, channel before. And it's like, well, do I really want to uh, talk about it again then? Because I've technically done video essays on it like twice is the thing already. But this would be the one time that I'd be talking about it while in a place that actually got, you know, natural disastered, you know. So there's that. You <laughs> said that your PC died. Oh, jeez. But yeah, you know the feeling after playing Super Mario Galaxy always mentally looked? How you could jump on the roof of every building by using a wall jump plus spin attack combo? Yeah, it just starts to feel so natural. I remember, like, this past summer when I was up on my roof doing, like, some painting at the uh, top areas up there. And I was looking over at the neighbor's roof and I was like, man, this feels like I'm playing Assassin's Creed. I just want to jump from roof to roof. I didn't, obviously, because I have a semblance of safety and self-care, but... You know, after playing Assassin's Creed and stuff, it's like, I wanted to, you know. I'm doing alrighty. I'm a little bit, a little bit stressed, a little bit confused with university stuff going on. I'm returning to this game that I haven't played in over a month. Like a month and a half, something like that, actually. Because I usually don't cover free apps on the channel. And this is an app game. I'm playing it on my, uh, on my phone. <laughs> is the, uh, is the case. But, it's a prequel story to... You know, a different video game that we covered on the channel, Octopath Traveler proper. Octopath Traveler 2 is coming out this coming February, I believe it is. So it's going to become like a trilogy if you count the app. And it actually has like a finite amount of story content. It's not like one of those free apps where it's like, oh, it never ends. It just goes on forever. There actually is a finite story. So it's like, huh, maybe I should, you know, do more of it. So now I'm back to it after like a month and a half after focusing on other games. So... I'm doing a smidge here. I'm still a little bit turned off by it because, you know, as a free app, it's going to still have a lot of freemium elements. And that's why I haven't had the motivation to play it for the past month and a half. But I've been like, you know, I'll do what I can. I don't think I'm going to be able to do a full playthrough of this game, but I'll do what I can. So that is my status here. Yeah, my little Jimmy jumped on the roof of the neighbor and he had banned Assassin's Creed. So Karen in the U.S. Yeah, 
video games are causing kids to do crazy parkour free run and stuff. Whoa. And you drain the whole glass right in front of everyone. I still... I guess we're gonna start to understand who the heck this character is because we don't know yet. I wonder Lord Taviano... T Taviani look at, took a liking to you. Sounds like an Italian name is what it sounds like. I don't know. That's how it went down. What is it, Sonia? Never thought we'd be working together like this. But yeah. Enjoy the lurk there, Plague Doctor. When did you become such a romantic... We were always causing trouble when we were kids, weren't we? It looks a little bit loud on OBS. I'm gonna turn it down just a smidge. So I'm gonna do like here. That's probably pretty good, right? I was looking over at OBS and it looked almost like the same volume of my voice. But that's not great. My voice should be louder. Do you remember? Whoa, fly oh, you can see my mouse cursor on the screen if I put my mouse cursor over the thing above. When the right white grape blossoms bloomed back home. You always go try to steal our share. It's Ezio's grape field that he retired with at the end of his story. <laughs> Even now, every spring, I remember those days. And we never knew where our next meal was coming from. Makes sense to delve into something like this in the wealth plot line trying to take down super wealthy crazy bish um i remember too your parents were humble farmers just like mine to think that those grapes make the wine those greedy bastards drink indeed indeed so what did you do after i left town not long after we lost our vineyards they were taken from us by Lady Herminia. Why is there nobody behind the counter? There's nobody else in the entire place, honestly. If the vineyards were all we had, mother and father died, even poorer than they had been. I swore a vow that I would take our fortune back from that witch. But yeah, if the Assassin's Creed parallels continue, the story of Octopath Charm will be resolved in some obscure comic book, I swear. <laughs> The, uh, the story isn't even concluded with both this game and Octopath Traveler 2. You're missing so many crucial pieces just to understand what the heck is going on. You have to buy some obscure comic book somewhere just to finish it off. And if I do do either one big video essay on just a bunch of things I want to talk about in Assassin's Creed, or just several smaller video essays talking about, like, individual aspects that I want to talk about it, like, for such a long time, I've wanted to do a video in some form covering that situation with Assassin's Creed. Not for Chronicles Russia, but for, you know, the overall bigger picture. Where, for like a decade, they were leading up to some big finale, and then they were just like, you know, never mind. We're just not gonna do that in the games anymore, and we're just gonna pretend that plotline never happened, and then we're gonna resolve it in like the most convenient way imaginable in some obscure comic book no one's ever heard about. You know, <laughs> it's, the, uh, it's the case. Like, in my opinion, that is one of if not the greatest story writing sin in gaming history. From what I've seen, honestly. And I've seen some great story writing sins. Like, just look at Sly 4, for example. My good gracious. But to be building up across an entire series of games over a decade up to some great finale and then just be like, you know, never mind. It's like... Ugh. <laughs> The most sinful story writing play in the gaming industry, in my mind at least. Um, and so you fell in with Taviani. And then second greatest sin is probably Sly 4. Um, <laughs> ever since then I've been doing his dirty work. But I don't care how far I've fallen. I'll sink to the deepest hell to take back what's ours. If I had to choose a third, I don't know what it would be. I'd have to think about it. <laughs> no, that's what our town has been ever since that witch took over. But no more. We're going to take it back and make things right again. We're going to take back Twitter. I mean, what? Oh, we will. Tomorrow is a new day. Snowbloom ruins are just north of town. But yeah. 
Oh, it's okay. It's I've ran. <laughs> yeah. I can read a map. I'm not a child anymore. I mean, there are games that have existences that offend me. Like, just look at modern Roller Coaster Tycoon titles, for example. <laughs> like Roller Coaster Tycoon Adventures, which was literally a scam. You know. Like, as much as I'll criticize games like, you know, modern Pokemon games, for example, they would never be able to top Atari literally scamming people, you know, to the point that I'm surprised they haven't been sued over it, you know, <laughs> is the, uh, is the case, becoming a literal scam company. So, you know, modern Roller Coaster Tycoon games are gonna offend me. It was straight up a crowdfunding scam. They said that they were building a game from the ground up, now is your chance to get involved. Um, they didn't build the game from the ground up, they just, like, ported over and slightly changed the, uh, mobile app that they already had onto the Switch. Um, the, uh, the rewards that they were promising people weren't even made good on, <laughs> as far as I can tell. Because, you know, the lowest reward was, like, give them $250, and they won't put your name anywhere in the game, but they'll put their, your name on, like, a crowdfunding website that shows all the backers. So, I reached out to Atari support you know, trying to pretend to be one of the backers, being like, hey, where can I find this site? Because I could never find it. And they never, like, they never responded to me. So I have never heard of this site existing when there was something that they promised. So, you know, they straight up lied in multiple instances and basically just took money and ran was a thing. Just like, yeah, we're going to put the money into the, uh, into the game. And then they just did the cheapest thing possible of just bring over the mobile game and make it look slightly different and then take all that crowdfunded money and run with it. Um, I hope so. So, you know, stuff like that offends me. Especially considering when you think of Atari, you think of, you know, the gaming giant from 80s to 90s and stuff. Um, let's go to the place. And then they, nowadays, are just a literal scam company. So, crazy how, uh, crazy how things change. But, my goodness. Um, yeah, I'm sure they had a great vacation. I'm sure they had great bonuses. But the story of Sly 4 is that it's just like, they took everything that the trilogy did, and then just undo, undid it. Threw it in the trash. Said that it was meaningless. Just completely, you know, massacred the characters. It was like what the modern Star Wars movies did to Luke Skywalker, for example. That's basically what happened, but for a lot of the characters in Sly 4. Is basically that. They just stopped being themselves and just became awful. Alright, well, hi! Well, how to do? 